you bring a praise in your heart? Yes. Amen. Woo! Well, we're going to celebrate the king. Is he worthy of our sacrifice oh, yeah. of praise? Yes, he Amen. is. Thank so you, even Jesus. now by faith, let's stand real quick. You know what they say, when the judge come in the room, all, all rise. rise, and he's the just judge. Lord, yes. even now by faith, we invite your presence in this place. We ask you, Lord God, that you would unite our body, our minds and our hearts together, Lord God, and we would bring the sacrifice of praise to the worthy king, Lord, the God that conquered the grave. It could not hold you, Lord God. You rose, Lord, and you didn't just rise, Lord, but you shared your victory with us, your children, Lord God. So we worship you tonight, and we invite you to have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Good to worship with the saints. Praise God. Praise. 
Thank you, Jesus. He's given us every breath in our lungs. God. Yes, Jesus. Last time I checked, it was all about Jesus. Yeah.
Praise good. God, God, good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hey, uh, you can take your seats if you like. We're going to take up a tithe and offering. If you got an offering unto the Lord, I encourage you to give it to him now. Give it in faith, not in religion, but in obedience to the word of God. Amen. Because you give it in faith, you're opening the door for God to do according to his word. Amen. But if you're doing it out of obligation or anger or, uh, you know, yeah, hold it. Hey, spend it at the taco shop. Norm. Hallelujah. So we're going to finish up from last week. We were talking about the um, book, of, book of Samuel. David, anybody remember what we read last week? Yeah, I don't either. That's all right. A week was a long time ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Woo! I'm just glad I remember the directions how to get here. Amen? Well, if you want, let's go to 1 Samuel. We're going to finish it off. We talked about David and Goliath, about the giants in the land. Remember, they were sitting there a little bit fearful. They had all of God's army there, and everyone was kind of afraid. They were just kind of sitting there cowering. And then this little ruddy shepherd boy came up out of nowhere, and he said, What? You tried to defy the name of the Lord God? Amen. He wasn't gonna. He wasn't gonna go for that, you know. Because then one of the things I wrote on there is about serving Saul or serving God. See, some of them were trying to serve Saul. Me and uh, my sister Judy were just talking about that because sometimes you can get caught up. How many people know anybody that ever gave you the testimony that I used to go to that church, but the pastor left. Now I don't go to church anymore. Anybody ever heard that testimony? Yeah. Amen. So if they were going to church and the pastor left, they might have been going to the church, maybe, possibly, for the wrong reason. Amen? Now, God might have moved them on, too. But you don't serve the man. You serve God. But in the process of serving God, guess what he's going to have you do? Serve a man. He's going to have you serve the pastor. Wouldn't you agree? And wouldn't he, he, wouldn't help, wouldn't he have you serving one and another? Amen. Didn't that's what he called us to, right? Servicehood. That's what we're supposed to be. Servants of who? The most high God. Amen. The most high God, the God of heaven and earth. The highest. The highest and he handpicked us. Remember what you used to serve? Anybody remember any of that you used to serve? It was usually the wrong stuff, amen. A lot of it was self, exactly right. And in the serving of self, we were serving a lot of foolishness. Amen. But David came along, and he recognized, hold on, something isn't right, you guys. Hold this army is a fearful. And, you know, if you're not careful, even today in 2022, there's a lot of things that might make us fearful. If you listen to the news, they're going to really try to make you fearful. They're going to make you terrified of what may come ahead. Or don't you know this is what the doctor said you must do? Have you, have you noticed the doctors don't always know what they're, what they're talking about? But, you know, this doctor always knows what he's talking about, right? The Word of God. He knows exactly. He, <laughs> amen. He is a great physician. I think we're going to read uh, starting at uh, 1 Samuel 17, chapter 30, or verse 36. And when he was getting ready to come out and, uh, and stand up and fight, they said, you can't fight. You're just a boy. His response was, Verse 36, your servant, he's telling Saul, I believe, has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. So he's relating back to his, his time in the field about the time he knew God, and he knew God was with him, and he knew God had called him to take care of those sheep. So now the next place in his life, he's relaying back to when he was a kid or back in the field of what God had revealed to him. So when he was going forward, he was confident that God was with him. Amen? And even you and I, where we're at right now in our life, it's not just to be somewhere. It's to be somewhere in God, establishing the things of God in our heart and in our life and in our mind. Because things are going to come and try to rock that. And when we get rocked, we have to know, no, I'm going to go to 
the relationship or the foundation that God has established in my heart with him. See, because let me just say this. Religion won't take you through the fire. Religion might keep you in church, but it won't take you through the fire. But you know what will take you through the fire? An intimate relationship with the God of heaven and earth, the God of all power. See, that's what we need even now in our lives going forward. That's what we need. That's why the word of God is so important. Because see what it says, when we read the word of God, we find out who God is. And we know this about God. He's not a liar. So it's something that you can hold on to, and it's a sure foundation, and it will take you through. And that's where we have to always be going. And we're not just trying to get through the day, even though that's part of the fight, making it through today. But we know that as we're making it through today, we're laying the foundation for tomorrow. And what David did was his relationship with God, it brought him to the next place. And when he saw this war, he wasn't saying, oh, man, what do I do now? He goes, hold on, who has God already showed me that he is? Hey, there was a bear and there was a lion trying to take my God's sheep from me, who's on post to protect them. He goes, oh, I'm going to go get them. And let me ask you this. Would you go get a sheep out of a bear's mouth? I probably might not. You know what I'm saying? That takes a little bit of faith. What? Sorry, little sheep. There's, there's more of you. You know what I'm saying? But God was establishing who he was in David's life. Amen? And that's what he's trying to do in your life and in my life today. He's establishing who he is in our life. Amen? So that when it gets rocky, we have something to stand on and we're going forward. In faith, knowing that he was with me yesterday, he's going to be with me again today. Amen? So he says, verse 36, he says, Your servant has killed both lion and bear and the uncircumcised feelings. I like that. He's just calling him a heathen, essentially. This guy's an uncircumcised Philistine. He don't even know the God of heaven and earth that I know and that you know and the armies of God knows. But I'm going to, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. See, he was standing on what was happening in the spirit realm. This guy was trying to defy God. And David found it offensive. He took offense at this guy against his God. I mean, we're supposed to be humble, and we're supposed to be polite, and we're supposed to be kind, and we're supposed to be gracious. But we need to stand for the things of God. Hold on. You're defying the God of heaven and earth. Because sometimes we put it in a sense, we're just be passive. We've been being passive for 50 years. And look at the condition of America and the world today of being passive. And I'm not saying we war. Because who's the war? Who's supposed to war? God. We even says it in here. The battle belongs to the Lord. However, you and I are placeholders here on earth a representative of god almighty and when they're offending the the almighty god we ought to defend it amen would you agree that don't mean sock them that don't mean cuss them out i don't know every circumstance is a little bit different but there are times to stand strong amen i think this right now 2022 is the time to stand strong they're trying to put transgender in the office. They're trying to put transgender in here. They're trying to exalt this sin and exalt that sin. They're trying to put co-signing all this sin. Um, probably just to get a vote. But they're trying to do this. And it's bringing down the morals. Hey, not just the nation, but the morals of the church. Because we're not against transgenders. Hope you're not against transgender. We're not against trans. A transgender is probably somebody who's a little bit confused. God loves that person. They're not our enemy. God is for them. Amen? And we might be the only thing that stands in the place of them coming to know God. Amen? That's where we want to get, actually. Let's read on. <clears throat> Verse 37. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me, deliver me from the Philistine. And Saul said to Dave, go and the Lord be with you. Amen. God's telling you today, go and the Lord be with you. Go in your faith and stand on what the Lord has put in your heart and know that the Lord be with you. Amen. Verse 38. So Saul clothed David with his armor. I like this part. See, he tried to put the armor on, but guess what? It was the wrong armor. This is fleshly army. 
This is worldly armor. David goes, I don't need the worldly armor. I have another armor. I have the spirit. Uh, what is the armor of God? Amen. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. See, he already, David, before that scripture was ever preached, David already knew he had that armor, right? Because the armor of God isn't what you put on. It's what comes out of you. Exactly right. It's the word of God. It's the foundation that God has built in you knowing who he is. Amen? Amen. And he's trying to put this outside armor on him. He's just weighed him down. Amen? He wants to put the inside armor that comes up from the outside. And it's a spirit. He says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. See, the only way to fight the war that you and I are in today is the spirit of the living God. Amen? That's the only way. It's the only way we can go forward and be victorious. Because if we do it in our strength and in our wisdom, we're going to lose. And look at Adam and Eve. They were in the garden with God. And they tried to do it in their strength. And look, look at they lost. Amen? And the devil's been deceiving people ever since. Unfortunately, he's deceived us a couple times. However, God's doing a new thing. Amen? Amen. So Saul, verse 38, clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail, you know, the metal. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. See, it was the wrong kind of armor. The armor we need is the Holy Spirit. The armor that we need is the wisdom of God. The armor that we need is the understanding and discernment of God. Amen? Verse 40, then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones, not rough stones, but smooth stones from the brook, and he put them in a shepherd's bag. Amen? Just a little shepherd bag. It wasn't even a warrior's bag. It was just a little shepherd bag. It's what he had already used. Because, again, he's trying to build on what he's already given us. He's trying to build on the tools and gifts that are in you that are already there because God had given them to you. Amen? We used to go to the church. Remember Pastor Day, or James? He used to say that all the time. I had the gifts out there, but the problem was I used them wrong. But God brought me into the church, and he used the exact same gifts, but he sanctified them first. See, sometimes we don't realize that, but the gifts that we had out there are still the same gifts in here. You might have this, but we want to bring them and surrender them to God. Amen? And let God develop them in us and use them on this side of the kingdom. Amen? He used the shepherd bag. He didn't use a warrior bag. He, he, he knew what he had from past, and that's what he brought forward. Amen? And a pouch which he had in his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. So this guy had a shield bearer. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he was disdained. See, sometimes when we're trying to stand in the society today and the world today and we're trying to stand on the things of God, they're going to look at us with what? Disdain. They're going to look down their nose at, how dare you come at me with that humble little thing? How dare you come at me with, with that pathetic word of God? Don't you know we're on a higher realm than that? Don't you know our understanding is deeper than the word of God? Have you ever had conversations with people like that? I've had people specifically tell me that. I'm on a higher level than the Word of God. It's like, you step back a little bit. You go, like, okay. There is no higher level. <laughs> there is no higher level. But they'll look down at you. Hold on. I don't believe in that. I'm going to stand on this because this is truth. They'll look at you like you're pathetic. But think about it in the end. What do you think is going to last? The word of God. Exactly right. Amen. It's eternal. For he was just a youth. Ruddy and good looking. So the Philistine said to him, look what he says. Am I a dog that you came to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his little g-gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And then David said to the Philistine, you come to me. See, I like this. See, that guy was again coming with the earthly realm and his own natural realm elements fighting. 
and tell him what he's going to do. And David says, you come to me with that little sword and with your spear and with the javelin. But I come at you, see, not in David's strength, but in the name of the Lord of hosts. See, I think that I think God's doing it now, but he wants to teach us how to fight in the name of the Lord. Amen? Now that is a full-time job, trying to figure out how to fight in the name of the Lord. Amen? Would you agree with that? But do you think it's probably the most beneficial thing to learn is how to fight in the name of the Lord? You ever see people, I've seen it happen, I've done it, as a matter of fact, rebuking demons all over the place and no demons leaving. You ever seen that? You know? Because we got to be careful, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we have authority, but we have authority when Jesus told us we had authority. Amen? Because we can rebuke a demon, and they, 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 there was one scripture where he says, Paul I know and Jesus I know, but who are you? And then they got their butt whooped, right? Because we got to be careful. We, have to, we can say a lot of things, but there's one authority that we need. We need God's authority, amen? And we need to learn how to fight in the name of the Lord, amen? The God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day, the Lord will... Stri- the, the, he, didn't, he didn't have no shame. He didn't have no fear. He didn't get into a tussle with them. He didn't get in a war, war of words. He just spoke to them plainly in boldness. Why? Because of the relationship he had with God before. And what do you say? Verse 46. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. See, we're in a war right now where we need to be able to have the enemy delivered into our hand. Amen? And I will strike you and take your head from you. And this is just a little boy. And this guy, remember, how tall is he? Nine, over nine feet tall. And he's just, David's just a little guy, probably about this tall at the most. Just a little guy. And he, I think he was only like 17 years old. He was just a youngster. And this day I will give, and all of Saul's army, they were all men. They were all grown men, had been warriors for most of their life and been in the army of God most of their life. And they grew up in it, and they knew how to fight, and they won many victories, but God brought them to a place. See? Hmm. There might be a place right now where we're at that God's trying to bring us to so that we can, he can bring us to the next place in understanding of who he really is. What we don't want to get caught is just being churchgoers. We don't want to just be caught doing things. We want to be caught going forward in faith, knowing who we are in God and knowing who he is in us and going forth with the purpose of what lay ahead, knowing that there's a call and a purpose on our life. Amen? Because think about this. The body of the Christ, uh, the body of Christ, If you took this finger off and threw it on the ground, what would happen to it? It would die. But would the body be missing something? It would be missing something. Would it be a little bit weaker because of it? That's why we're at a war in our own selves at home many times and through the work day where the enemy is just trying to get us in the moment and make us forget about the call of God on our life and the purpose of where he's leading us to. Amen? And I do believe we're at the end times. We've been saying that for a long time. But they've been in the end times since Jesus' time. But we're in the end times. Amen? Would you agree with that? I mean, it talks about the mark of the beast, and they're talking about many, how many people, my brother made it through, I know that. How many people know somebody that lost their job because they refused to take a, a, man, a vax mandate? Anybody? They're losing jobs left and right. Doesn't it say in the Bible that they'll take the mark and they will not be able to what? Buy or sell. Do you don't think that's the preparation? Do you don't think we're pretty? If you lost your job, you probably just got told you can't buy or sell because you've refused to take the vaccine. Now, isn't that crazy? Preparing. And it's not speaking against the vaccine. If you took the vaccine, praise God, you took the vaccine. It's not that big a deal. But this is the thing. If it's the vaccine today... And in six months, it is the mark, or it's this or that. And if you don't take it or do it, you don't get a job. I know this for a fact. I know that there's cops that had pensions that said, we're not going to take the vaccine. And they said, well, you, you got to quit. And they go, we quit. 
and then they go, well, I want my pension now. You know what they said? If you don't take the vaccine, you don't get the pension. See? They're doing that in Canada right now. The truckers are trying to fight. They're, first, they took $10 million from one company, GoFundMe. And then there was another company, Give, Send, Go, raised another $10 million for the truckers. And they, tried, they took that money. And now they're coming up with another one, and they're calling them terrorists. And they're trying to do it that way, you see? But all they're trying to do is say, hey, if I don't want the vaccine, I don't think I should have to get it. That's all they're really doing. And not only that, they haven't really proved that the vaccine works. They, it's not even really a vaccine. So why is there this big push to make everybody get it? Other than they're pushing us into something, amen? That's the one thing I keep trying to tell people. This is the time, I promise you, this is the time to establish the foundation in God, to lead you to the next step, and secure the next level of foundation, to be strengthened. So when they come, however they might come, we'll know because of the power of God and the Holy Spirit and what he's revealed to us, just like David. David said, I'm not afraid of that, and I'm not afraid of that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stand on this because it was the rearing up of God in his heart to know it was time to war on behalf. Amen? Hey, it's time to war on behalf of your family. It's time to war on behalf of yourself. It's time to war on behalf of your nation. Amen? Let's read on. And, and this day, I'm in verse 46. This day the Lord will deliver you in my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, so that's what he told the enemy. And this day I will take the, give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. That, why? That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Why do you think he's preparing us? So that all the world can know that there's a God in Israel. Amen? What's his name? Jehovah? Jesus? Anything else? Jehira? Huh? Yahweh, Elohim, amen? El Shaddai, the Almighty God. I am that I am, amen? Verse 47, then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. See, it wasn't the sword and the spear. He was the faith of David. You What, what delivered Israel? David's faith. What will deliver us? Faith. Amen? Not in our sword, but in our God. Amen? For the, Lord, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag, and he took out one stone. He didn't take out five. He took out a stone. And he slung it and struck the Philistine into the forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead. Now, I've been hit in the head. Anybody been hit in the head with a rock? Did you ever have it sink in your head, or did you have a lump there? See, it was the other hand. It's trying to sink in, brother. Once I got hit with a golf ball right there, and it gave me a big old lump and two black eyes. But it didn't indent in my head, and that thing was a straight shot. Boom. But this rock indented in his head. Man, that, do you think David could have done that? That had to be supernatural, amen? It, it had to have been good. Yes, amen. And he fell on his face. face. Hey, he finally started worshiping God. <laughs> And he fell on his face to the earth. I think that's what we need to do. We need to fall on our face. Amen? Verse 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine, and he killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, and drew it out of his sheath, and killed him and cut off his head with his own sword. Amen? And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Now the men of the, now listen to this. Now the men of Israel and Judah 
arose and they shouted. Now all of a sudden they had faith. All of a sudden, now all of a sudden they're excited. Before they were crickets and they were scared of the army. They're scared of this guy. But now when one guy stood up. See, sometimes that's what you don't realize. One person's voice can change a whole room. There's a, a, a study where they had these guys come on the elevator. And when they came in the elevator, everybody was standing against the wall facing it like this. Like, here's the elevator. And then the one guy comes into the elevator, and he looks around. He goes, well, I guess I'm supposed to stand and face the wall. So everyone in there facing the wall. Why? Because everyone else was doing it. You see what I'm saying? Don't follow what other people are doing. Don't follow someone else's Christianity. Don't follow because they've been in church for 35 years. This is what they're doing. But follow what God is telling you to do. Amen? Because David did what God told him, and then everyone got delivered. Amen? And then not only did they get delivered, but they got to participate in the, in the proceeds. Amen? Let's read on. And they shouted. Now all of a sudden they got boldness. And they shouted and they pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell along the road. See, he was brave. He conquered them. Now everyone else started wreaking havoc. Amen? And fell along the road to Sharim, even as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the children of Israel returned from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their tents. Amen? Thank God somebody stood up. Amen? And David took the head of the Philistine, and he brought it to Jerusalem, but he put it in his armor in his tent. Now, that was a different time back then, but that's what they used to do. They used to take the head of the guy that they just conquered, and they used to take it and put it on a pole outside. Why do you think they did that? Mess with us. And this will be you. Amen? God, God's a man of war. Now, we sh I wouldn't encourage anybody to put anybody's heads on. I wouldn't even encourage you to chop anybody's head off. However, we're in a war. We're in a battle. Amen? Let's read on. Well, let's go real quick. He did. Yeah. He did. Let's read that. And he put his armor in his tent. So he kept his, you know. His little trophy in there. Verse 55, And when Saul saw David going out against the Philistines, he said to Abner, the co commander of the army, Abner, whose son, is this, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As your soul lives, O king, I do not know. See, he was a nobody. He was a nobody. They overlooked him. Sometimes you might feel overlooked. Sometimes you might feel it's over ab above your ability. But it's not our ability. It's God's ability. So the king said, inquire whose son this young man is. And then David, and then as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, Abner took him and brought him before Saul and the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, whose son are you, young man? And so David answered, I am the son of your servant, Jesse the Bethlehemite. Isn't that wonderful? He's, he could have been all cocky and all haughty. Don't you know? But you know, I'm the son. Huh? Exactly. I'm the son of your servant. So he's declaring to the king that I'm your servant. Amen? Because sometimes God might use us in a mighty way, and then we might think this and we might think that. But we have to remind ourselves, who are we? We are the servants of the Most High God. And if we're the servant of the Most High God, what does that make us? The servant of everyone else. Amen? That's right. Exactly right. We're not done. Let's go to 1 Samuel 13. Now, that scripture there is a fulfilling of prophecy. Verse 13, 1, 1 Samuel 13, 13. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. Remember Saul? Remember what Saul did? Well, yeah, he did that. But remember uh, Samuel told him, I want you to take this land and in the process of taking this land. He says, I want you to kill every animal here. And then when Samuel come up to do the offering, he heard the sheep bleeding. He says, what happened? He didn't kill them all. And what did he do with it? He kept, he goes, we kept the good for ourselves. Amen. Ah, oh, man. And then that scripture came out. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And you remember, here's another scripture. Remember Cain and Abel? What was their problem? What happened there? Jealousy. 
But one brought the right sacrifice and one brought the wrong sacrifice. See, sometimes we find ourselves sacrificing to God what we want to sacrifice. And there's nothing wrong with making sacrifices. And if you're not sure, make a sacrifice. But in the process of seeking God's voice and seeking God intimately, sacrifice what he tells us to sacrifice. Amen? A lot of times we want to sacrifice this. And we want to sacrifice that. And we can't figure out why there's a hindrance or a block or we're not getting to the next step. But he makes it very simple and very plain. Cain killed Abel, but the thing that that happened was they both brought a sacrifice. One brought the wrong sacrifice. The other brought the right sacrifice, and he was rewarded openly, right? And in the process of being rewarded, the other one got jealous. I go, I know what I'll do. I'll kill him. He shouldn't have done that. You know what he should have done? Wow, I need to do the sacrifice that God has told me. Amen? How many people in here struggle with making sacrifices to God? Anybody struggle with making sacrifices to God? Do you get caught up? And you have, hey, there's, this, there's this one joke I heard before. There was a guy, he had two sheep. They were born at the same time. And one was supposed to be offered to God, and the other one, he's going to be his. And his wife asked him, well, which one's God's? And he goes, well, I don't know yet. I ain't figured it out yet. And then the next time he come in the door, the, the one sheep got killed. And he goes, he come in to tell his wife, well, guess God's sheep died today. So at that point, it was decided in his heart, the dead one is going to go to God. See, well, that's not the sacrifice. Does that make sense? That's not the sacrifice we want to give. We want to get from God the sacrifice that he tells us. Hey, the best one. The first fruit. Those are both. Yeah, amen. Something. Thank God for Pastor James. That's another thing he taught us. He said this. A true sacrifice is something that costs you. Right? Something that you want to keep. Something that's precious to you. You go give it away and you make it a sacrifice. Amen? And God's looking for those sacrifices. And then Dave and Saul... He did the wrong sacrifice. He was supposed to kill those sheep. Why do you think he might have wanted to kill those sheep? Why do you think God might have had him kill? Because he's a vicious, mean God of the Old Testament. You ever heard that? I've heard that. Because he wanted to do away with all that heathen nation. I think it was the Amalekites. They were heathens. They were against God. They worshipped any way they wanted. They worshipped all sorts of things. They did child sacrifices. And he wanted them to come in the land and eliminate all of it so it wouldn't be a sore to the people. Amen? Make sense? Amen. Praise God. Let's read on. We'll close here in a minute. Verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. See, he, he, he chose sacrifice over obedience. What do we have from the Lord that helps us in obedience? Anybody? The Holy Spirit. Praise God. Amen. What did you say? Amen. Anybody else? God's conscious. Amen, brother. That's right. But now your kingdom shall not continue. So when David went and slayed the giant, that was David essentially, what was he getting? The throne out of the deal, right? Remember, even before David went and slayed the giant, do you remember what happened? When he was at his house and Samuel came and anointed him king? Huh? He came and anointed him king. And did, 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 But did David get to be king at that point? No. What did he get to do? He got to go back and be a shepherd. Why do you think God didn't have him king yet? It wasn't his time. Exactly right. He was out there in the field learning about who God was. Amen? It, yeah, exactly. Praise God. That's right, exactly right. And in, 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 but and he could have got disgruntled. 
He could have got discouraged. He could have got mad at God. Why God not this? And why God not? Don't you know they came and anointed me king? Don't you know? But he didn't do that. He just kept serving. And he kept being obedient. And he kept following God. And then his dad told him to go there. And then he found himself at the exact battle, at the exact time, and the right time. And then he stepped up in faith. And he slayed the giant. And if we read at the end of that chapter that even Saul said, hey, who is this guy? Now, all of a sudden, he was in the right place at the right time. And then after that, Saul took him, and he put him in the king's house. And do you remember what he was doing in the king's house? He played music. Exactly right. And so his service was still to God by serving Saul. And in the process of doing that, he was another opportunity to be disgruntled. Don't you know I've been called king i've been anointed king don't you know i have this right and then saul out of his jealousy started trying to kill him amen and the whole time david is trying to learn what about who god is you see what i'm saying see sometimes we get going in the church we get going in life and we forget that we're on a course and i hate to say it i talk about myself grumbling and complaining anybody grumble and complain at work or anything yeah See, I don't know, when we grumble and complain about where life is or where we're at, we're really speaking against God. Because who put us there? That's good, yeah. We're doubting who God is in our life. Exactly right. And, but he's got us at that place. Because wherever we're ready for is where God has us for. Amen? And if you're stuck, that's all right. Nothing to be wrong with stuff. But if you're stuck, pursue God. And if you're getting the victory, pursue God. Amen? Because if you read this, let's read the rest of the scripture. Verse 13, I'll read that again. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. So that's he lost. He disobeyed. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord. So in the process of waiting on God, what should we be doing? Keeping the commandment of the Lord. Amen? But of the Lord your God, which he, God, commanded you. See, sometimes... I lost it. But sometimes, which he, God commanded, it's God that commands us. We talked about it also about serving Saul. You get caught up in the wrong thing. Wherever you're at, you have to go, no, this is where God has commanded me to be. And in the process of being at that place, let him develop you to the next place. Amen? And then when he brings you in, guess what? You're ready which he commanded you for now the lord would have a look at for now the lord would have established your kingdom over israel forever but now your kingdom shall not continue but listen to this the lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart and the lord has commanded him to be commander over his people because you have not kept what the lord commanded so God chose a man that was after his own heart. So let me ask you this. The question that you, I want you to answer, you can't give an answer, but where is your heart today? Is it a heart after God? Is it a, a heart after the things of the world? Is it the heart after money, fame, riches, fear, flesh? Or is it a heart after God? Amen? Praise God. That's the right answer. Amen? Does anybody have anything they want to share on that? It is hard to do. Well, I would encourage you every day, pray, God, give me a heart after you. God, give me ears to hear your voice. God, give me courage to follow you. Amen? Every day, all the time, whenever you think about it, because it is, it's a difficult challenge. And then the, the thing is, we can come together and have unity and faith, but sometimes when we get isolated by ourselves, you, by yourself, and then the enemy just kind of works at you, and then he gets you caught up. Does anybody notice that? He gets you caught up in the moment? Amen. Hey, that's why it's so important to know what God's telling you to do and do that.
Because then you take it as an assignment from God. He didn't tell me, he didn't tell me, he didn't tell me, she didn't tell me. God told me. Therefore, when the rocky things come, you can stay the course. And I promise you, he has something for each and every one of us. Amen? He does. Would you agree with that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that you are a significant part of the body of Christ? Amen. Whether you're here or at home, right? Even when you're at home watching TV, do you realize you're a significant part of the body of Christ? Many times when I'm watching TV, you guys come to my mind. And I think, would these guys walk in on me watching this, would I be watching it? See, I get, you got to shut that channel off. You see what I'm saying? Because that's a part of being a part of the body of Christ. Even when you're, huh? Well, it's whether it's TV or nothing. It doesn't have to. Praise God. But it doesn't have to be TV. It could be in this conversation. It could be in my mind over there. But the thing is, we're the body of Christ. Amen? That God has called for an assignment at this time in our lives. Amen? And if you're here, there's a reason for it. Do you have something, brother? That's awesome. Did you read that somewhere? Well, praise God. That's awesome. The year he's saying about killing the Amalekite sheets because they were using those flocks to worship false gods. So they're tainted. That's good. And that's kind of what we do when we come into the church and we're in the church and then we go back to our old things and we try to... Has anybody saw the things of the world creep into the church? Have you brought anything from the world into the church? That's the battle, amen? And that's part of why he says, amen? Anybody else? Amen. Who do you want to show yourself approved to? And who else? But to show yourself approved to yourself, to judge yourself rightly according to the word of God. Am I doing this? Am I being faithful? Your own heart. Yeah, your own heart. Alma. Seven fourteen. Woo! Yeah. His face. When, and when it's uh, Amen. 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 Seek his face. Go ahead, brother. Face. So let me ask you, are you doing it? But if you feel like God told you through her, then you need to take it that God is speaking to me, and I take it important, and I'm going to make it a priority in my life. Amen? The priority. Because when the other stuff comes, you got to go, hold on, man. God spoke to me through her, and he told me to seek his face. So you have to decide. Because who do you have a heart after? That's what he wants to know. Yeah. 
They're not going to be in heaven. Amen. Tony. I'm in agreement, Sister Tony. Yes. Do it. You you Deceiving yourself, that's good. blessed. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Okay, two more. Go ahead, Steve. Amen. Amen. I believe that step is around the corner. Go ahead. What were you saying? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. It'll make it more difficult, yeah. Amen. Amen. Mikey. That's good. And you know what he's going to do, brother? He's going to build your faith up, and he's going to strengthen you in faith, and he's going to keep bringing you to the next place. But you got to keep pursuing that, amen? And if you mess up or, like, you know, don't read the Bible that day or you, you get lazy, 
Don't get discouraged. Just say, you know what, I'm going to get on it again tomorrow. Because we all kind of go through that. You know, no matter, God's never up there trying to condemn us for anything. But he's not also trying to excuse us either. You know, the blood deals with our struggles. But he's always trying to bring us to a place of sanctity. Amen. A, a place of usefulness. A place of purpose. Amen. If we get purpose from God, then we have a purpose. What better, what higher purpose is there than a purpose from God? Amen. Yeah, exactly. There is none. There is none. Even now, Lord God, we pray, Father, that you would continue as we leave this place, that you would continue to speak to each and every one of us, Lord God. Even now, by faith, I pray that you would impart vision to us, Lord. And as we go home, that we would meditate on what you spoke to our hearts, Lord God. For you were speaking, Lord, through many people here, Lord. So we ask you, Lord, that you would continue to speak and that you'd reveal to us your purpose in the body, your purpose for today, and your purpose, Lord God, in the kingdom for each and every one of us, Lord. You know who we are better than we know, Father. So we ask you, Lord God, that you would give us a heart after you, Father, and that you would lead us forward. And, Lord, as we pursue you, Lord, I pray that you would fill us with your peace, your will, your joy, Lord God, your discernment and your strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We're going to sing a song of uh, praise.